Good morning and welcome to The Angry Astronaut. I am hours away from departing for Boca Chica. And yes, the poll that I put on Twitter, there was a narrow majority saying that I should stay put. And I agreed with that at first, but then I had an opportunity to talk to my contacts at Boca and I discovered that there's a lot happening there right now. And I haven't actually been to Boca Chica for more than 18 months. And if I were to wait until the time of the launch to try to cover some of these things, I would be crowded out by enormous numbers of bystanders and also not just YouTubers and social media commentators, but also tons and tons of local and international media. That being the case, I thought that it would be good to get a jump on everything happening at Boca, so I'm on my way there and none of this would be happening, obviously, without your support, so thank you so much. With what I've raised up to this point, it should be able to support two trips because of uh, additional bonuses, uh, discounted hotel rooms, discounted rental car flights, etc. Should be able to manage all of that again because of you, so thanks so much for that, but if you'd like to support this endeavor a little bit further, I'm certainly not going to turn it down, especially given the way things are with Google Ads right now. Okay, I've talked enough about that. Let's talk a little bit about 250 tons to orbit. So, uh, first of all, for those of you who are huge SpaceX fans and easily triggered, you might want to click off of this video, because even though the title of this video may suggest that I'm very much in favor of this configuration for Starship, that 250 tons to orbit on an expendable Starship is just amazing and would crush the competition in every conceivable way, I don't even begin to believe that. And I'm a little surprised, to be honest, that SpaceX is even marketing an expendable version of Starship. It seems to run against, run contrary to everything that SpaceX has been trying to market as far as Starship is concerned for all of this time. Starship is based on 100% reusability. And if any of this ship is expendable, whether it be the booster or the orbiter or anything else, it really loses a lot of its advantages. And let me tell you why. And we'll just go back to what Elon talks about, right? And what he's talked about all along. If you were to take a flight from New York to San Francisco and then throw the airplane away, it's just going to be insanely expensive and very inefficient to do those sorts of things. And that certainly applies with Starship as well. I'm surprised that more people aren't saying that right now. I mean, is there something magical about Starship? Oh, yeah. Well, it's kind of like throwing away the airplane, but it's a really big airplane with a huge amount of payload so you could afford to throw it away. Really? Well, in my opinion, I think it's even less efficient to throw away something this big and this impressive as opposed to trying to reuse it. In many ways, the idea of using an expendable starship is a little bit like using a more efficient and somewhat less expensive SLS. Sometime in February or March of 2023, assuming everything goes well, SpaceX will commence with what I hope is going to be the only fully expendable launch of Starship in its history. Both the booster and the orbiter is going to be lost during this particular test run. And honestly, in my opinion, I don't think it's very likely that SpaceX is going to at least intentionally lose all of the components of this rocket. I believe that they will at least try to save the booster on future launches. Losing 33 Raptor engines is just not the most cost-effective thing in the world to do. However, recently, as the result of some of Elon's tweets, which were backed up by figures on the SpaceX website, some news has been circulating about a 250-ton payload from a fully expended Starship. Although the particulars of what that actually means 
vaccines hasn't been made very clear. Some people say that it's the result of expending just the Starship portion of the rocket, while others believe that it's going to require expending both the Super Heavy Booster and Starship in order to attain that kind of payload. And people who have been crunching numbers online, by the way, seem to support this notion that really you can't get 250 tons to orbit unless you use everything in both portions of the rocket. Once again, I'm not a rocket scientist, so I can't say that with any kind of certainty. What I can say, though, is that SpaceX has at least announced that 150 tons is now going to be realistic with full reusability built in. If you're going to add another 100 tons to that payload, it seems to me that you're going to need the full capabilities of the entire rocket to do it, but once again, that's just my opinion. Regardless of whether you lose Starship, Super Heavy, or both though, Starship's ability to compete in today's market becomes far more problematic. Why is this the case? Well, unless SpaceX wants to deploy a huge number of version 2 Starlink satellites, I really don't see a whole lot of customers in this market that would want to take advantage of a more expensive Starship just so they can get that 250 ton payload. And one of the main reasons for this is called the tyranny of inclination. And what does that mean? Well, if you put a bunch of payloads in one rocket, it means they all have to be going to the same orbit or the same orbital inclination. That kind of rideshare only works if the payloads don't care what orbit they're in, if just being in space is enough. If you have a specific purpose, like sun synchronous orbit, you're probably not going to be using a rideshare launch anyway. If Starship is not fully reusable, I can see a late 2020s market where the small sat industry is still the norm, a lot more mapping and Earth observing satellites are seeking rocket lab or relativity launches because they can't wait for the right Starship launch and Starship is struggling a bit because it's in operation well before there's a big demand for that kind of service and this is why it must be reusable because rideshare or any other type of payload is rarely going to fill it to capacity and I'm talking 150 ton payloads not 250 tons. The market has been heavily incentivized to build smaller, tighter payloads for 40 years, and it'll take them another 20 to get out of that because there's a shit whack. One shit whack is equal to 1.12 metric shit loads of infrastructure invested in these kinds of payloads. It's never been really clear as to how Starship fits into the actual existing right now market demands. Its potential is awesome, of course, and everybody has ideas with very few business cases where it makes sense. Hence, ride share being Starship's day job for the next few years certainly has a number of downsides and will be vulnerable to competition. But there are a number of specific uses for an expendable Starship that make a great deal of sense. First of all, Lunar Starship was designed to be expendable from the get-go. Lunar Starship is designed to land astronauts on the moon and then eventually return to low Earth orbit where it can be refueled. It's never supposed to land on Earth again. And then a storage depot plus booster. That's an excellent way to make use of that 250 ton capacity. It means that you could send up a storage depot with 250 tons worth of fuel already loaded, which means it would require fewer tanker visits to get it refueled. If you started out with 250 tons and you could add 150 tons with every tanker visit, six tankers plus the initial fuel depot launch would probably be enough, substantially less than the 10 to 12 tanker visits we were looking at in previous months. So definitely an improvement there, but once again, very much dependent on Starship's reusability. Without reusability, the cost of every Starship launch is going to increase exponentially, and I've had some very spiritual arguments with SpaceX advocates about this whole issue, as if somehow because Starship is manufactured out of stainless steel and mass-produced, it's going to somehow be much less expensive to expend a Starship than to expend the upper stage on a Falcon Heavy or a Falcon 9. 
I don't see how that's even remotely possible. There are six Raptor 2 engines in Starship, and on top of that, yeah, it may be built out of stainless steel, but so are the fuel tanks in the upper stage of Atlas V. That doesn't make it inexpensive. And honestly, I don't see how throwing away Starships is going to be a very effective business plan at all. In my opinion, one Starship is a fully mature system with a fully designed and mature tanker, for example, I don't see how that's going to be an inexpensive thing to throw away. Certainly not less expensive than a Falcon 9 upper stage, probably not as inexpensive as an expendable Vulcan Centaur. I just don't see how a six-engine Starship upper stage is going to be less expensive to lose than a single upper stage from a Falcon 9 with one Merlin engine, or the upper stage on a Falcon Heavy, which is, again, the same thing with one Merlin engine. It's just going to be a lot more expensive to lose six Raptors plus a Starship, and it will be hell to lose 39 engines if you include all the engines on Super Heavy just to get a large amount of payload into orbit. And by the way, Starship's capabilities drop off radically once you get beyond low Earth orbit, and you can get that straight off their website. Once you achieve geosynchronous transfer orbit, I'm not talking geosynchronous orbit, but GTO, the payload capability drops off to 21 tons, as opposed to Falcon Heavy, which can deliver 26.7 metric tons to GTO. Why is this? Well, it's simply because of the way Starship is designed. Starship is not the upper stage on a conventional rocket. It's a spaceship unto itself. It's very big. It has a massive payload, a massive fairing, and it's extremely heavy, which means once it gets to low Earth orbit, it's exhausted the vast majority of the fuel it has at its disposal, and going any further than that without refueling becomes extremely difficult. The only way to deal with that problem, aside from refueling, is to add a third stage, and SpaceX is a long ways away from being able to accomplish that. So what does all of this mean? Well, first of all, in my opinion, an expendable Starship, while necessary in some limited cases, is never going to be very competitive. It's going to be a very expensive way, not as expensive as SLS, but an expensive way of delivering colossal amounts of payload to low Earth orbit, something we're probably not going to need in the near future, with limited exceptions such as lots of version 2 Starlink satellites, or a refueling depot, or perhaps Lunar Starship. But the fact that SpaceX is talking more and more about this lately suggests to me that they may be expecting some problems with trying to reuse Starship. Not necessarily super heavy, but Starship itself. They may be anticipating some problems of doing that, and therefore are trying to find a way of marketing a partially expendable version of their Starship rocket. If that is indeed the case, their competition is going to be able to capitalize on that, because while SpaceX is not going to be moving forward in the field of reusability if they have an expendable Starship, ULA is going to be moving forward with their own type of reusability, and that doesn't involve landing boosters, but rather landing engines after you use all of the fuel in the first stage, something that SpaceX doesn't do. Of course, you're not saving as much infrastructure this way, and you're not saving as much money, but the engines are usually about 70% of the cost of the rocket in the first place, and smart reusability is going to change a lot of that. Utilizing parafoil recovery and an inflatable heat shield, which has already been tested recently, by the way, ULA will be recovering their engines on a flotational heat shield, not in mid-air the way it's described here. It's evolved since then, and then they will be able to reuse those engines without having to use any fuel to bring them back. It's not as effective cost-wise as SpaceX's method of recovery covering boosters, but at the same time, it allows ULA to make maximum use of the fuel in their rockets to deliver the maximum payload to the highest orbit and still recoup at least 
reduced some of their costs. That's going to allow them to remain very competitive against Starship, especially if we're talking about higher orbits. At best, Starship will be able to deliver about the same amount of payload to geosynchronous orbit as Falcon Heavy does, and not for the same price, which means I don't anticipate that Starship will be replacing Falcon Heavy or Vulcan Centaur for U.S. Space Force missions, at least not the ones to geosynchronous orbit anytime soon. Now, does this mean that I think that Starship is inferior or not competitive or is doomed to failure in the future or anything like that? No, I'm just trying to be realistic about it and also to stick to my guns when it comes to what makes Starship special. 100% reusability. This is something that Elon used to emphasize all the time. And the fact that we're talking about expendability right now seems to me to be taking a few steps backward. Starship will not come close to realizing its full potential until it's 100% reusable. Starship cannot effectively and efficiently land human beings on the surface of the moon until it becomes 100% reusable, and anything short of that is just not acceptable. Please like, please subscribe, still trying to get to that 100,000 subscribers, getting painfully close all the time. Thank you so much for your support, and please check the description for various ways to support my upcoming trip to Boca Chica, and as always, stay angry about space!